The IndyCar offseason is officially over, and you know what that means. We gotta talk about not only what's gonna be happening this Sunday at the St. Petersburg race, but we also got some new diecasts that are gonna be coming out very shortly. So, let's talk about it. So what is up diecast collectors, this is OBB, the diecast news guy, and welcome everybody to another one of these diecast preview videos. If you guys already know, I kind of made one last year and you guys seem to really like it, so I appreciate you guys' support on that. So um, it's kind of like the same thing that we did when uh, when I did the NASCAR diecast for 2024. So. But for anybody who is new to IndyCar, first of all, welcome. Hopefully you're going to enjoy a one hell of a series. I mean, hell, I remember the first time I went, I, walked, I saw my first IndyCar race, which was at St. Petersburg in 2013, and Hinchcliffe won that race. That's why I became a big Hinchcliffe fan. But for anybody who is new watching IndyCar, I will have to say that um, you're probably wondering, okay, so who makes the diecast? Well, that is the good friends at Greenlight Collectibles. Now, I don't really have the time and all day to talk about Greenlight Collectibles, but they are a well-known brand that you see at your brick and mortar stores, um, especially Target. And they have been the main uh, diecast manufacturer for IndyCar since, I believe, well, like the early 2000s. I mean, heck, um, you could just even ask my good buddy Dave Oland about that stuff. He, uh, he, he knows a lot about those IndyCars. <laughs> but um, I kind of know what I'm doing as well so you can see all the indie cards that we got in the background but anyways uh, yeah I'm just going to showcase you guys what we got right here in this diecast preview and we're usually just going to go and showcase um, I don't know the diecast that we got so um, instead of 124 scale diecast indie cars are actually scaled 118 so they're actually a little more bigger um, actually I got a representation of this right here so here's a 118 scale diecast and here is a I don't know a random Martin Truex Jr. COT so yeah, this thing is, is is pretty big, but they still got 164s. So with now all those introductions out of the way, let's go ahead and let's talk about actually what kind of diecast we're gonna be getting for this uh, season of IndyCar. And we might as well go ahead and probably start off with probably uh, the team that I think a lot of people are gonna be looking forward to uh, talk about. And you can actually pick up this diecast right now. But we're gonna be talking about the Arrow McLaren IndyCar team. And right off the bat, we gotta talk about a diecast like I just said. You can get right now at Circle B Diecast if you use my promo code OBBYT and you guys get the six dollars off of shipping but for any NASCAR fans out there you probably already know this elephant in the room Kyle Larson is going to be running the Indy 500 this year well first of all he has to qualify his way in unless we're going to have that weird qualifying rule that's been going on um yeah not a big fan of that but yeah, the beautiful uh, HenderCars.com slash Aero McLaren car is actually, this is a pretty cool combination that you got. And this is actually the first time Hendrick Motorsports is actually uh, getting their feet wet in the door. Um, they kind of already did with Lamaze last year, but for open wheel releasing, releasing stuff, first time. And man, it's been a big year so far for Hendrick Motorsports. Um, heck, just, I mean, look at the previous winners that we've had already with Kyle Larson, William Byron, and also uh, shout out to Rajah Karut as well. But we're here to talk about, well, I'm just saying it's all these NASCAR stuff because, heck, many NASCAR fans are probably going to be uh, new to IndyCar because they heard about Kyle Larson going in, but you guys already know the deal. So up on top, we got the 118 scale on the bottom is 164. And usually there are some differences with the colors. I mean, as you can see, I mean, usually the 118 scale die casts are usually, um, I mean, in this case, it is on an oval chassis, but there is a different type of chassis that they mostly use on the street circuits and short tracks. Um, that is uh, the road course configuration. So for the Larson one, not doesn't make sense that they're going to make that, but still is pretty cool that we got both these cars and they got the nice little added detail on the rims with the uh, the, the colored orange orange rims. So pretty nice, but he's got to race his way into this race. If he does, then he could join a nice good at least uh, uh, a nice elite list of uh, drivers like Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch, Robbie Gordon, and many more. But, yeah, I mean, this one is definitely going to be a must get. But, like I said, you can get this baby right now at Circle B Diecast. Or also, I'm a good buddies at Gutswear because my good friend Robbie Newton, Race Day 2011, or Robbie Newton Visuals, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, he was able to order this from Gutswear, so I'll even provide a link down in the description if you guys want to get that. But, uh, this is going to be one I think a lot of people are going to like, especially since they're actually, uh, Lionel Racing is actually selling a dual set that you can get right now. That's also at the retail store. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's looking good so far. So I think we got, we got to now talking about um, the three full-time drivers for Aero McLaren IndyCar team or whatever you want to call it now, but McLaren. So <laughs> wait, is this F1? But here is the veteran driver for uh, the Aero McLaren IndyCar team, a paddle award. So, I mean, we've had a nice trend of paddle award diecasts that came out and uh, 
feel free to check out probably my other paddle review paddle reviews because heck probably starting tomorrow i probably might have a nice little uh, review for you guys but this is the arrow the uh the uh, number the pretty much iconic number five arrow electronics paint scheme or i'm sorry livery that's the term we use in uh in this type of series so <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, as you can see right there, I mean, I really do like the, uh, it looks like a matte black, and then they got the orange accents on it. So again, 118's up on top, and the 164's on the bottom. Kind of going to be doing these, uh, like, a different way, so I like, save only not on time for you guys, but because I know I do like to ramble on, but, <laughs> like, I mean, if it's just rambling on about diecast, hell, I'll freaking do it. But this is going to be an immediate pickup for me, because you can see I am a huge uh, Paddle Award fan right here, uh, as I probably grabbed the wrong hero card, but <laughs> um, this is going to be a very popular diecast. I would recommend getting this diecast right now asap because all the paddle award fans or even their uh, high class fan clubs are going to take this car and they're going to flip it and sell it for a pretty ridiculous price oh yeah did i mention the green light collectible diecasts are nine dollars so nine dollars for rubber tire and metal chassis there will be some decal flaws but for good quality that's not plastic and cheap green light collectibles man and there's a reason why i keep praising these guys because heck um all the all the guys and ladies who you know work at collectibles um they are a much more of a smaller group than line of racing but man they do a really good job trying to uh keep this trend going with uh, the indycar diecast and heck i'm also curious what the packaging is gonna look like too as we kind of briefly saw that with the kyle larson car but paddle award man so next up we got us to talk about your 2016 indianapolis 500 champion alexander rossi making his second year in the number seven mclaren car and what can I say, dude? I mean, this one looks really, really cool, especially anybody who was a big fan of um, this livery that actually made uh, a nice little special return at the Indianapolis 500 in, in uh, last year's event. And so it's kind of cool that they kind of brought back that Marlboro uh, Team Penske scheme back. Or not Team Penske, you know what I mean, uh, McLaren. Um, as you can see, I'm a huge IndyCar fan, so, heck, you know, I love uh, both those teams right there. But, um, yeah, I mean, such an iconic livery, though. I will say that. I mean, um, my mind is just over overwhelmed from just all the papaya and the orange and all that so <laughs> but really awesome that we got the 118 and the 164 so as you can see they added a lot more black trim to it so i'm kind of liking that um that they're, they're going in the same livery design but just changing out the colors because heck the other guy we got to talk about is the new driver of the six car since felix rosenquist has moved on to meyer shank racing full-time um filling that void now come from dale coin racing and hmd motorsports it is little dave or david malukas so this is going to be a special car because we've only had one david malukas car that has come out before so gonna be pretty cool we're gonna see this car which looks i will have to admit it kind of looks like a scott dixon car a little bit to me maybe it might be a little hint but unfortunately i mean we can also probably say this is going to be uh column uh, column eyelots car as well because he will be driving this livery filling in um for uh, david malukas at st pete and also at the thermal club which if you guys don't know that is a thousand dollar not thousand dollar a million dollar challenge so kind of like a nice little all-star race that they're doing uh for indycar so heck if you guys like your nascar uh, tactics i mean indycar looks like it's kind of rubbing off on that a little bit <laughs> but yeah another cool looking die cast the, the black trim does look kind of weird but again i really like how they incorporate all the cars even though this literally straight up looks like a dixon car so um but heck, i'm all for it man i mean i'm glad we're getting all three of these cars um released and that's the cool thing about grand collectibles guys you don't have to pre-order these cars these cars are already released and majority of them probably i mean we might get some out at st Pete, probably the kyle larson car or big surprise i don't know i mean grand collectibles is very secretive when it comes to getting these indie car pre-orders well not really pre-orders but Hey, look at me. I just contradicted myself. <laughs> so you can see I'm just really excited because uh, I will be going to St. Pete as well. But Dave Maluka, the David Malukas car, good old little Dave. So rounding off to that now, we got to talk about Andretti. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> Andretti Global. Yeah, but this is actually really cool because we got to talk about his uh, the, the veteran driver right now, or kind of almost feels like he's a veteran now um, in this series. Colton Herta, as you guys know, he was your, uh, I think uh, two years ago, I believe he was your uh, 2020, uh, I believe 2022 or 2021 uh, winner. So pretty cool that we got the, uh, the game bridge car. I think 21 because McLaughlin was 22. So there we go. Sorry, y'all. I'm a little slow today, but, <laughs> but the Colton Herta game bridge uh, Honda for Andretti Global, that's going to take some time to get used to. Almost sounds like a stock market name. But many NASCAR fans are going to know the GameBridge uh, logos because that is on the Spire trucks. So, but um, yeah, the GameBridge car has been out for many years now. But they, of course, you know, they overhauled 
the whole team and they even overhaul the livery as well this is the first time we are getting white now on the game bridge cars so i like that but yeah this paint team also got leaked this paint scheme literally got leaked uh before the actual team wanted to show it so how about that it just doesn't happen for us uh, for us nascar Thanks fans happens here too so thank you green light for uh leaking this livery but it's pretty sleek i might actually pick this up because i do like the black accents with the whites and um and the white and yellow i almost want to say gold but i don't know kind of reminds me of like just new as a century 21st car a little bit when he used to drove for sarah fisher but uh man that that is pretty nice and i know weird comparison but heck uh <laughs> that's the time i grew up with indycar man but uh, speaking of that we gotta talk about the guy who is in the back with the automation colors for this year uh kyle kirkwood as you guys know he definitely became a predominant force in the 2023 um IndyCar series, you know, grabbing uh, the grabbing a few wins from last year, but really nice. I mean, especially even that Long Beach win, that was something, dude. But um, as you can see, this almost looks like an inverted uh, Meyer Shank paint scheme a little bit. So, uh, but I know they are going for a new look as well. Um, I'm, I will admit though, I'm not really the biggest fan of this font. Also, shout out to. Um, uh, as you guys can see right here, I actually do got uh, photos uh, that was provided by uh, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Jeff, or uh, good acquaintances, so I actually check him out. Uh, he is actually, I used his photos last year, and it seemed like he was cool with it, so doing it again this year. Um, but uh, really great work for this sim designer that, um, I mean, heck, I really do like the camera angles of this. But I'm only showing you guys this, not only just to you know, get some recognition out to this dude, because I feel like he does put a lot of good work into this stuff, so I'll have to get him a quick shout out. Um, Try to remember the last name though, but you see your logo, so you probably know who you are. But thank you, Jeff. But the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because Green Light Collectibles does not actually have the uh, photo of this. In, in fact, I think it even says on the pre-order list to be dated. So we know it's an automation car, and judging by look at this, this is going to be a pretty cool livery. I will say that. I, again, I'm really am liking this new look for Andretti. Although that 27 font definitely just, I don't know, it needs to be a little more bolder, but I understand what they're trying to do. Maybe I'm still trying to hop on that Rossi wagon when he used to drove that 27 car. Um, man, I feel like the guy should have won a championship. But, hey, it's going to be cool to see Kirkwood back in there. We'll see what happens. He is a Florida native, so watch out for him. Probably to do well at St. Pete. But um, this one's going to really throw a lot of eyeballs. But if you guys remember the uh, number eight Husky uh, car driven by Marcus Erickson, who's also an Indianapolis 500 champion. Well, um, after four successful great years with Chippy Nice Racing, he actually decided to move on because heck, they're going through a whole young phase now with all these young drivers coming up. He actually is now moving into the number 28 uh, Delaware Life car, which again is another sponsor that you Spire fans are going to know. Um, so I, I really do like that uh, Spire is now getting in with uh, all these uh, Orangetti kind of uh, put their sponsors out with Spire because like, I love it when worlds collide, man. I'm an IndyCar fan and a NASCAR fan, so why can't it be both? So I love it. But getting off topic there, man, uh, Marcus Erickson's number 28 Delaware Life car. I will have to admit, this is uh, again another cool, I mean, uh, dude, I've lost count how many bright liveries we've had this year or i mean man i mean compared to i'm looking back at some of like the old liveries that we had from andretti autosport and some were cool but like man the design needed an overhaul this right here it looks fresh it looks clean and uh even though it's about life insurance i will have to admit it's uh i don't know will it make me actually stay in delaware probably not but <laughs> with the bad pun out of the way man i'm looking forward to this this is gonna be another great looking die cast to take over uh romaine grosjean's uh, old ride but uh, but there's actually one more andretti die cast that's actually coming out and you're probably uh, wondering okay why the hell do i have a photo of marco andretti well it's going to be a Marco Andretti car, and believe it or not, this photo, um, this is supposed to represent his 500 ride, all right, the, uh, the map, uh, the Mappy or map Eye, where you want to call that sponsor, um, this is, this is, uh, what, uh, his car is going to look like, and of course, we don't have the actual die cast for this, but this photo is from Andretti, uh, Global on their website, so it kind of looks like an AI photo or something, dude, some really bad photoshopping, but judging by the color of the fire suit, I, and you know what this, uh, paint scheme or this livery kind of reminds me of, uh, remember that, that Marco Andretti 2020 Sergi car that came out, or Serge, uh, or Sergey, I don't know, I think that's what it's called, it sounds like a big muscly man going, Sergey, but no, it's just, yeah, the 98 card but you see yeah the liver design was pretty atrocious <laughs> compared to what we have now but that's probably what's gonna look like because the colors look pretty uh well there's gonna be a lot more color to it than this but this is just give you guys a representation of what this car looks like because there's no real photos of this car at the moment 
but yeah, that is something. So yeah, Andretti Global, dude. What what can I say about that? That is uh something to say at the least right there. So now getting on to some championship winning teams. Now, what more report, better way to actually look at your 2023 IndyCar Series champion, uh, Alex Pillow. I mean, heck, as, as you guys already know, this guy has kind of stacked up a lot of uh a lot, a lot of good wins so far, and he was pretty much just unstoppable last year. Um, I feel like the guy's gonna win at Indy 500 one of these years, but um. Already now multiple IndyCar Series champions, so uh, pretty impressive right there. But to nobody's surprise, um, with Grand Collectibles, we always get the uh, championship diecast that comes out, you know, a year into the new diecast season. So a lot like what NASCAR does, but also the Indy 500 winner as well, which we is going to be determined. So we don't know yet because it hasn't started yet. But there's a big difference going on with this diecast right here for the Alex Polo car because the championship winning car that's on a road course. And it looks like it's in a liquid color or like a chrome finish or something, dude. Something that's really going to catch a lot of people's eyes. While looking at the 164, it's on the oval chassis, which of course, I mean, well, if you want to count this year, sure, it counts because we're going to be racing at the National Super Speedway. But 2023, it didn't end that way. So... And you guys are probably wonder, okay, why the 164 scale die cast for gun collectibles are only on the ovals? Well, it's because Indy 500 is the most marketable uh, source for IndyCar, and that's where most of the money goes. So they just go with just one mold. Um, I really wish they, they would actually bring the road course configuration on the 164, because this is a good example of a die cast that the 164 collectors are really going to miss out on, but. Still recommend getting it. I mean, I guess you could say you can be the one <laughs> to get this car. But um, I like the red accents on this car, and I, I think this uh, I think this version of this car actually uh, was released a few years ago with Tony Kanaan. Um, so cool to see it with uh, out with uh, Alex Pillow. So pretty nice. But I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, well, show me the 2024 stuff. 2023 is cool. How about 2024? Well, if you guys remember DHL, which has been a longtime sponsor for Andretti Global, well now. They have, I guess they just vacated now into a pretty smart move of them. They are now going to be the new title sponsor for um, Alex Polo. And here is the DHL livery, which again, Jeff, great work right here. This thing looks fast, looks mean. I can see this car winning a lot more races coming in for this year, even though people probably don't want to see that because we already see that happening with Max Verstappen and Kyle Larson and the other two series. But the DHL car, man, this is a, this is a really cool, I mean, another bright, simple livery. Man, you guys racing. I mean, I think all these companies, uh, all these teams out here, IndyCar, really just know how to make good-looking uh, liveries because this one right here, really, I, I'm going to be watching out for this thing at St. Pete. But um, speaking of the uh, American Legion, guys, we got to talk about the uh, newest driver of the number eight car, which was your 2022 Indy Lights, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> Indy Next. Sounds like a... Uh, I don't know. Indie Next sounds like a like a bad sitcom uh, reality show or something. <laughs> Who will be the next? But <laughs> here is the uh, American Legion number eight car driven by Linus Lundqvist. So another Swedish driver. So I'm sure all you Swedish fans are going to find this quite sweet. But <laughs> um, it's going to be the same livery possibly as what the Alex Polo car that I just recently showed you. But it's a number eight car. As you guys know, this is also uh, the car that won the 8500 in 2022, so uh, pretty appropriate since that was also a good year for Linus Lundqvist, but um, heck, I, I mean, more Swedish uh, drivers, the better, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is pretty cool, even though I think you're probably going to have that one fan out there that's going to be like, there's a Swedish guy driving an American Legion car? Oh, the irony, but hey, this this is any car, not NASCAR, buddy. I don't know what to tell you, but... <laughs> Um, as you can see, I'm just having too much fun with this, so um, if you guys were not really expecting this type of content on a preview video, then apologize, but that's just, I don't know, try to bring some personality into these uh, preview videos. But speaking of personality, Scott Dixon's PNC car. Wow. This thing actually changed. I'm kind of glad they changed it because if you guys saw on that um, David Malukas, uh, David Malukas slash Kyle Eilat's uh, car, yeah, that looks very similar to what the PNC car is well known for. I'm really glad. They, it looks like they went the same color route to the two-tone or the dual-tone color route that went with the Alex Pillow DHL. Really liking that. I, that is, This is a really sharp-looking uh, livery. And you can see it's on the road course configuration, of course. That will only be in the 118 scale, not for 164. The day we get road course configurations on 164 is the day I'm going to be a happy SOB. But really cool to see, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the current GOAT of IndyCar right now. I mean, I can't tell you guys how much Scott Dixon has accomplished but in his career. 
but a second E500 is still a big burden. So um, is this going to be the year? Scott Dixon's going to break that curse. Oh, we'll wait and see, man. We will. Um, speaking of that, we, uh, speaking of curses that are actually have been broken, but just kidding, though, we, we got another driver who has been, you know, every other year has been in the championship routes, but it is your defending Indianapolis 500 champion, Joseph Newgarden. And, well, Pretty much probably the most boring car that we will get in every single wave of diecast, but it is his Hitachi car. And I will tell you that this is probably one of the most plain Jane looking liveries that we'll ever see, but it's iconic and heck, I mean, heck, a rebrand or a refresh would look cool, but it's iconic, all right? Hell, even from the distance, it kind of reminds me of Will Powers' Verizon car from 2014. Remember that bloody wanker? Because guess what? We got to talk about him as well. But before we do that, we also got to make a shout out and return for the third time in a row. The PBG car is coming back. So anybody who's missed out on the PBG car for throughout these last few years with McLaughlin driving, driving the PBG car and now New Garden, well, they brought it back again. So... Um, this is another cool livery that I'm sure a lot of you Ryan Blaney fans out there are going to look at this and be like, hey, I remember uh, a paint scheme like this. Pretty much an exact carbon copy. And I'm glad this livery hasn't changed. I mean, it looks like the rainbow gradient decal on the 164 doesn't look too good compared to the 118. So, uh, yeah, like I said, Greg Clicksables is not perfect. I, mean, I know I might praise them a lot, but they are not perfect because, yeah exactly the point i just made but still is cool that we're still getting the ppg card because you know i'm a big fan of that livery and uh now we gotta talk about this guy right here will power in the verizon business car so a nice change of pace probably the penske car i will recommend picking up since it is a different livery it's on the verizon business car and um I don't know. This car looks like it kind of looks like that old Verizon car that we all know and love, but with a nice modern twist to it. And again, I mean, who does like that color combination? Black, white, and red. I mean, hell, what more of an asshole can actually like that car? I mean, hell, I don't know. I'll have to know who that guy is, but willpower, man. I mean, this guy is another legend in IndyCar. Um, you know, he has, you know, a, a pretty interesting uh, personality, to say the least. I mean, hell, he, he's got no filter. Let's just say that for the Aussie. But uh, to round things off for the Penske cars, another car that has been released before but we're getting it back again it is the expel car driven by scott mclaughlin your 2022 st pete winner which was the first time i went to st pete and damn that was a damn good race although i probably don't uh, i don't know i want to um see i don't know another driver's ass getting literally burnt i mean that's what happened to scott mclaughlin <laughs> note to self don't sit on the side pods when you're in victory lane but uh, may suffer second three degree burns or something i don't know it sounds like a medication commercial that lists all the side effects while you see someone happening and celebrating <laughs> but anyways we're getting off topic but that's that's good and all all right the expel car um i guess it's gonna expel you into i don't know making a big diecast purchase but <laughs> but i will say one thing about great collectibles um I think they need to know how to, I think they need to know what exposure is because man, the top photo on the 118 is really overexposed. I mean, damn, it looks like a sun. It looks like, I don't know, it's trying to get melted by like a spotlight or something. It's like, wow. <laughs> so, um, if you guys want to work all these photos, they're actually on their Flickr. If you don't know what that is, then just look it up on Google. I mean, sounds like a weird name to post photos, but that's where we're going to like uploads their stuff. But that wraps up on the uh, you know the two teams that are pretty much going to be probably in the fight for the championship or the Indy 500 year in year out. But now we got to get on to another familiar uh, team that everyone kind of overlooks, but I think we uh, or underlooks. I don't know it's like a roller coaster for this team. Ray Hall, Lindemann, and Lanigan, and we got to start off with the fifth third bank driver of Graham Ray Hall. You know the longtime running driver and uh, well I don't know like. For, for quite a while now i mean this guy has been through it all and yeah we're finally getting a fifth third bank livery which i will have to admit this paint scheme is kind of all over the place it is i mean heck we do i mean uh it looks like we even got a shade of brazil right there probably just to i uh, i mean i i i probably to showcase because uh, the next guy we're gonna be talking about which is pietro fittipaldi as you guys know he is fittipaldi is a pretty well-known name so we, now we got ray hall and fittipaldi but of course um 
quickly talking about Ray Hall, I mean, of course, you guys know, I mean, last year was a pretty interesting year for him, you know, missing out the Indy 500, and then he took over Stefan Wilson's ride, so hopefully this year it's going to be a lot more smoother, but now getting on to Pietro Fittipaldi's, this one is going to be interesting again, and probably might turn some heads. Now, unofficially, I don't think this will be the actual title, or, uh, because, again, this is another car that is on pre-order at a lot of websites, including Circle B, that just says the sponsor is to be dated. 5 Hour Energy just released that they're going to be sponsoring uh, a good amount of races. I don't think they're sponsoring for St. Pete's, so... But, Pietro Fittipaldi's car. This right here is um, is definitely something. I, I, I will say that, man. That this car... That this is giving me a lot of cool uh, Eric Jones and Clint Boer vibes. So, uh, but it's really cool to see a Fittipaldi back into IndyCar. I mean, uh, you know, he kind of briefly had a shot with Dale Coyne from a few years ago, but glad to see he's back. And um, more importantly, get to kicking some ass. I mean, heck, because uh, who does like a good famous Brazilian in uh, Victory Lane? I mean, just ask Tony Kanaan and um, the orange juice guy, you know, Emerson Fittipaldi. So, <laughs> but really, really cool um, that we're going to get this. But of course, the big controversy is five hour energy. Um, you're probably like, well, they're not going to make this on the 164 scale. Grid Collectibles, they can do that, right? They've made vodka cars before, so another good reason why I praise Greenlight Collectibles. Uh, but now that actually, um, actually, we are actually looking at uh, one more Rejo Lemberlanka driver, and that is, uh, I believe, uh, Christian Lungard. So if you guys already know, uh, he is the driver of the 45 car uh, for a good amount of time now. I mean, that iconic high V livery. Guess what, guys? It's making another return, which we already had the 2023 variant last year, and we've had a lot of other variants that came out. Uh, from the previous years but man dude this is really cool that we're still getting this uh i don't know i really like the black and red livery design that we got for uh christian Lugard. plus this guy won at the toronto race so he's now an official indycar winner and thank god he's shaved that stash because hell he uh he looked like a different persona or something but really cool that we're getting that we're getting all three um ray hall lambert lankin cars so that is pretty darn nice. But now getting on to these next two, which again are pretty unofficial because the sponsors are still to be dated. But these sponsors were announced like I think like two months ago or so. Ed Carpenter. All right. So right here, this is going to be the number 20 Guy Care. And yeah, you probably know what that is. Guy Care. So <laughs> um, I mean, come on, guys. Do you care? I know. Bad joke. But a really cool livery design that we got right here for uh for the ovals this is probably gonna be the oval car that's gonna be released um but it could be interesting because if they release this in the road course kit then they're gonna have to actually uh, showcase another one of our rookies for this year your 2023 indy lights slash indy next champion but yeah christian rasmussen so really cool that he's gonna be driving on the um because this is what usually ed carpenter racing does um they have one driver drive on the ovals which is usually ed carpenter because he owns the damn team and he's usually good on ovals i mean hell just look back at his early days with the verizon indycar series and christian rasmussen he's gonna be driving for the uh street circuits and the um uh, the uh, road courses so that's gonna be pretty cool but really like the livery design on this really cool the teal and the black and the white um man i mean again the liveries just look so cool on this um and speaking of that guys we also got to look at uh another one of your uh well I, I guess you could say this guy is kind of a veteran too now since he's been in the series for a few years now renus vk the dutch man himself in the ask roy or yeah i think ask roy uh with an i not a well, why so <laughs> um askroy.com um chevrolet for at carpenter racing again very similar uh livery designs but this time instead of the teal it's green so dude this is so cool i mean i already got so excited with the bit now cars but now we get the ask roy car i mean i don't know i mean in terms of probably the best looking paint schemes i mean i'm all for the aero mclaren cars but man, both these Ed Carpenter cars, I gotta admit, they look really freaking good. So shout out to the, whoever designed the livery on this because you know how to make good liveries because this is a nice good refresh. I mean, there's so many refreshes that are going on right here in the IndyCar series. So really liking that. Uh, but um, let's see right here. Now we got to talk about, speaking of refreshes, uh, Romain Grosjean is now going to be with Hunko's Hollinger Racing. So if you guys know, he uh, is now taking over the Vacate 77 car, which was originally driven by Colum, uh, Colum Eilat. But now it's uh, <laughs> since, you know, it, 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 IndyCar seed silly season, let's just say, was nuts um, when we got to the end of last year. So, Romain Grosjean, I mean, some people say it's going to be a downgrade, but we'll see what happens. They've showed uh, speed before um, alongside with his teammate, Augustine Canapino, which, 
I know the Arge Ar Argentinians who are wa anybody who's actually an Argentinian who's watching this. I mean, you guys are real MVPs. Um, just keep it low and you know and quiet when uh, you know your driver gets involved with another driver. So because <laughs> we had the whole incident last year and that was no bueno. But yeah, really, it's going to be an interesting combination between Romain Grosjean and Augustine Canapino, which ha again, I mean, both these liveries look very similar, but there are some small differences. And I'm glad that this is the second year we got the Hunkos Hollinger cars. So really cool. And I think we are getting pretty close to the end. So right here, we got uh, the one and only Meyer Shane car that's coming out, which is going to be the 06 Cliffs car. No, not like cliffs like the uh, the breakfast bar or protein bar you get at your store i'm talking about i don't know some cliff sponsor i mean hopefully it's not gonna make me jump off of, of a cliff but <laughs> this is elio castro nevis's uh zero six cliffs car which has been revealed compared to the marco andretti car and i mean for a minor shank car it's definitely different i will say that um you guys probably wondered okay why there's no felix rosenquist or um or um or a uh, bloomquist i guess or uh yeah tom bloomquist or felix rosenquist well, they haven't announced those yet, and if you guys remember, I mean, heck, I mean, when Meyer Shank first came with, with, for IndyCar, and when we got the diecast, I think, what, like in 2021, we only had Elio's cars, so give us some time, probably next year, or if the, or those two cars end up finishing in the podium for the 500, then we'll probably see the diecast produced, but for now, this is the lone wolf for the four-time Indy 500 champion, trying to go for five, the drive for five, well, I just showed five fingers or four i can't count today <laughs> but yeah this is really cool and rounding things off to a very obscure card that you can also get at the ims um museum this is uh the th let's just say grill collectibles made a solar eclipse car for the solar eclipse that's coming out i guess what like somewhere around april early april so uh sounds like a bad april fool's joke but no i mean um they actually funded and produced a a template on this and made this which is pretty interesting i mean um it looks kind of cool i mean i'm glad we're getting more programs so but um pretty obscure to say the least but you're probably but i i think i think if you're a purdue student you probably will like this because heck your college is now on an indycar die guess so that's gonna be pretty cool um shout out to my buddy joe as well he's also a purdue graduate so yeah um yeah, I mean, I don't know. It kind of looks like this car looks like it's like, it's like an over-glorified Halloween car, you know? Because I see the purple and the orange. I'm just like, spooky, scary. Oh, no, we're just looking at, a, at an eclipse. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, let's go burn our uh, eyes together. <laughs> or I don't know how eclipses work, but... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that is pretty much going to wrap it up right here for this diecast preview. So again, I know it's probably not 100% perfect, but that's what makes these videos unique. So appreciate you guys for that. And more importantly, feel free to comment below what diecast are you guys looking forward to for this new IndyCar season. As we'll probably see some more surprises coming out from our good friends at Green Light Collectibles. And again, check out Circuit B Diecast and all the other major diecast dealers that I have, you know, praised throughout these last few years. Because um, there's a good amount of them that actually sell IndyCar diecasts. But until we meet again, guys, this has been OBB, the diecast news guy. And I will see you guys at St. Pete's or back in the reviewing station.